Lanez, the nose, that's her, Corinne, one of the great French perfume creators, a real artist in the fragile world of fragrances. Her working tool smells them all, the sense of harmony, but also the whiff of something wrong. Well, there is something in the air, not here in the south of France, home to Roberte, a world's leader in perfume design and fragrance production. Elsewhere, in Brussels, the European Commission clash with perfume producers in a battle of scents. On the negotiating table, a report from the EU Scientific Committee on Consumer Safety. Over 300 pages recommending restricting those natural ingredients that cause allergies and banning three outright. This report gets up Katrine's nose. If it becomes law, perfumers would need to change several famous fragrances like Chanel No. 5. We will lose some subtle tones. We risk that some precious perfume properties will disappear. It's like forcing a painter to get rid of one of the five primary colours. He wouldn't be able to paint like before. It's like taking notes away from a musician. It would be a real pity. Let's go to tiny Montségur sur Lausanne, the very heart of French lavender flower production. The summer air smells different, full of fragrances. Chris, a young distillery manager and a tractor driver nicknamed Mirabel, share the same fears. The thunderstorm forecast for later today and the storm over the European Commission limiting the use of curmarine, an allergenic substance present in lavender flowers. This European law on allergenic substances under discussion would be a catastrophe for all professions dealing with natural raw materials. Such a law would limit the use of those substances on a very low level. 90% of existing natural raw materials could not be used any longer. The perfumers would have to change all their formulas. It would be the debate about banning peanuts in Europe all over again. It's just something stupid. Not everyone agrees, as we discover in Lyon. Consumer protectors warn ambient perfumes are flooding public spaces, shops, even magazines to attract customers, creating big problems. About 2% of Europeans suffer from allergies like Agnès. She has to buy her cosmetics at the pharmacy. The beautiful fragrances everywhere cause violent reactions. Quite often, the smell of perfume gives me an instant headache. I get a sudden skin reaction. It starts itching. It's very annoying. There are more and more ambient perfumes used all over the city. I think they're quite aggressive. They have a very strong and heavy scent. These ambient perfumes should be banned from some locations. Let's move on from Lyon to Grasse, the capital of perfumes and close to the lavender growing regions. There are 2,500 lavender producers in France covering 20,000 hectares. In Grasse, life is about perfumes and Robertet, a world's leader in natural fragrance production and perfume design. Their 22 branches worldwide turn over 400 million euros a year. The EU report shocked people here with its long list of allergenic substances to declare, limit or ban. To adapt, the French perfume industry would need to pay up to 100 million euros, according to one of the directors. Robertet's cost? 5 million euros. Allergenic substances are part of perfume products. All the big perfumes would disappear if the proposals of the scientific community on consumer protection are implemented. Entire branches of perfume making would be doomed. It would be the death of the industry. We could no longer use jasmine, ylang, sandalwood or bergamot. All those ingredients and essential natural products would no longer be used. At Saint-Henri-sur-Mer, we meet Pascal. 
Her beloved eight-year-old nephew died in his school canteen, suffering from allergies after eating a tiny piece of sheep's cheese. Since then, Pascal has joined the French Association for Allergy Prevention. For Pascal, food allergies and perfume allergies are the same battle for labels and limits. There's been an uprising from allergy sufferers for years. We get more and more feedback from people suffering from those allergies. All product ingredients should be fully labeled without exceptions. Ingredients should be clear and easily understandable. No use of scientific names, just real names which are familiar to everyone. In Manosque, we talked to Bert, working at the Experimental Perfume Plant Centre. He disagrees that EU legislation covering chemical substances, known as REACH, also rules over essential oils. Lavender oil is not a chemical, he says. It's natural. He's against labelling. The problem is not about knowing if coumarin is allergenic or not allergenic. What matters is how your body reacts. Take a few drops of lavender oil and put them on your skin and see if you have an allergy. People have been using it for thousands of years without being allergic to it. We have to consider the complete product. There's no need to dissect it and to test every single component of it. Back to Grasse. The city wants UNESCO to designate its local perfume tradition to world heritage status. Lavender producers have the same idea. UNESCO should protect them against the bad boys of Brussels. In the International Perfume Museum of Grasse, we learn about the origins of fragrances. Perfume making was born from another activity, that was glove producing. For this you would have to go back to the 16th and 17th centuries. It was the Queen Marie Antoinette who wanted to have nice-smelling perfumed gloves. You know, in the former times there were some bad smells around. Well, so it was a way to fight against those bad smells. While Chris distills lavender oil, European negotiators distill a compromise. An initial proposal restricting allergenic substances to a tiny percent of a product has probably been dropped. This would signal a partial success for the perfume lobby. However, three ingredients will almost definitely be banned. Well, it's okay that we should get rules and laws for some dangerous products. Nevertheless, we should trust people's basic common sense. There's no need to decide for people what they should eat, what they should wear, what kind of perfume they should use. This would open up the doors of the European market for Indians and Chinese. They would profit from European overregulation and conquer our market shares. It's a breathtaking battle between well-organized business lobbies and patient groups, between scientific researchers and political powers. The new law will be on the table next year. Will it signal the end of Europe's perfume makers?